Ugh. All right, hold on. Let me drink some Kool-Aid here. Hey guys, Omar here. My name is Omar Gonzalez. I'm a professional photographer in New Jersey. I shoot mostly events, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs. I do a lot of portraits of kids and families. And I've been using Sony, the Sony a7 III for almost a year now. But I decided to make this video because I've been shooting Canon and Sony together for my professional work. And recently I've been kind of, the, let's put it this way, the Canon 5D Mark IV is now my backup camera. I never would have thought that about a year ago, but I wanted to make this video uh, to let some photographers that are thinking about switching to Sony, to let them know my experience, some things that I wish I would have known before I started, uh, things I've discovered throughout the year, and hopefully it'll help some of you professionals out there. So the great thing about shooting Canon and switching over to Sony is that the lenses adapt pretty easily. I use a Sigma MC11 adapter and right away my Sigma lens worked fantastically. The lens that I love, which is my favorite lens that I will not give up, is my 70 to 200. Great for ceremonies, you know, great for portraits. And it works absolutely beautifully. You can adapt it over except in lower light. In lower light, it could get kind of hunty. But if there's enough ambient light, if it's like a nightclub or a reception where there's enough DJ lighting where you can see, uh, the Sony can, with adapted lenses, pick up. Now, if you're a natural light portrait photographer, family photographer in the park all the time, you're gonna be totally fine. With enough light, the adapted Canon lenses work completely just like they do on the Canon. I've only found in low light is where I start to get the little which drives me nuts. Next, the days of moving a focus point around, <laughs> you could throw that out the window. One of the joys, one of the great things I found is that I could focus more on composition and also searching for moments. If you're a wedding photographer or an event photographer, uh, not having to worry about a focus point or the technical aspect of the camera is a big weight lifted. You can actually look for moments and think more about the art that you're trying to make. It was just really liberating to let the camera do all the autofocus with eye and face detection and all that good stuff. So the first few months, I realized I was getting a lot more grabs at 1.4 than I was on my Canon 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark IV, and also my eyes are going. Before, I was able to check critical focus on the back of the screen, and it wouldn't focus on the eye. Sometimes it would hit the eyebrow or it would hit the nose. And that was starting to get frustrating because there were images that were beautiful, but I miss focus by about that much if I'm shooting close at 1.4. So uh, the eye autofocus is a game changer. Surprise that the battery life in the a7 III, uh, they have a Z battery, which can last just about as good as the 5D Mark III. If you're coming from the 5D Mark III, that's how good the battery is. Uh, the 5D Mark IV's battery life is poorer than the uh, a7 III. I can do almost an entire event with just about a battery and a quarter, a battery and a half. And with the Canon 5D Mark IV, I feel like I'm going into the third battery for most events. As far as image quality goes, the images, although this is a 32 megapixel camera and this is a 24, the images were clearer, sharper, and you're gonna be blown away by the dynamic range. Let me explain. Images that were unsavable, like you know when you're working an event and your flash just decides to explode, kerpa, or you're too close to your subject and you get blown out highlights, blown out face. With my Canon 5D Mark IV files, some of those images were unsavable. And also if a flash made a mistake, then blown out images, blown out details, the highlights can be brought back almost to normal without any of that crazy, the artifact weird orange you get with your Canon. So that was a huge surprise and a super bonus. Okay, here are some things that you're gonna have to live with if you're switching from the Canon. Okay, the first thing is Canon cameras feel great in the hand. They absolutely are the best feeling cameras. They're tough. They got that nice rubbery feel. And so I wish that my a7 III felt like this. It does not. It's a little more cramped in the hand. And so that's one thing you are really gonna miss if you are switching from a Canon 5D Mark IV. I've added a grip at the bottom. 
just a little additional grip so my pinky has something and it's made it better, but my knuckles will scrape on the lens adapter, which is a little annoying. Something else you'll have to live with is startup time. With a DSLR, you can flick it on and completely just start shooting. So if your camera's off by accident, just flick and you can start shooting. Amazing to grab moments, amazing. <laughs> with your Sony, if you flick it on, it's gotta go through a whole startup process. So it's about three, let's try to time it here. Here we go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. It's like two seconds. So I have found that startup time, the camera has to like read the cards. It's slightly annoying. Next, the Sony menus are a complete mess. Anyone that tries to defend them is lying. There's just stuff everywhere. And if the more you use the camera, I've been using it for a year, so I know where things are, but it's like a random, it doesn't make sense. Some autofocus features are in this main menu and some autofocus features are on like a totally separate menu. Unlike the Fujifilm cameras that have an autofocus menu that you can just find all your autofocus stuff together. So the menu system, hopefully will be improved over time. We're still waiting, but it's something you're gonna have to get used to. Luckily, there's a My menu where you can add your most used stuff, but so does Canon has that too. Next, colors. One thing you're gonna have to sort of do a little legwork on is your presets are not gonna just work right from the raw files of a Canon to Sony raw files. So you're gonna have to tweak your colors. And what I've been doing is I've been shooting a, a color checker passport, I've been sort of customizing my white balance before every shoot uh, just to know what the camera is doing. Next, the big one you're gonna have to get used to with is the viewfinder. If you're shooting flash, having an optical viewfind, oh God. Shooting flash, low light at a reception, you know you can look into your optical viewfinder and you can see exactly what you're getting. But with a mirrorless camera, the irony is the beauty of a mirrorless camera is what you see is what you get. If you're shooting in natural light, you see your exposure. But the irony is you actually have to use your mirrorless camera as if it was a DSLR when you're shooting receptions. You have to chimp, you have to check to see what your flash is doing, unless you're like a TTL master. I don't trust TTL, yo. <laughs> so I shoot manual flash. But um, just to see what the camera is doing, you need a little bit of uh, chimping going on. So what happens is if the venue is too dark and you look into the viewfinder, well, it's dark in the viewfinder because what you see is what you get. So you have to switch the preview off so you get a nice, beautiful, bright night vision, but that has nothing to do with your exposure. <laughs> so you have to sort of get into this mindset of where when the lights go down, your mirrorless camera acts like a DSLR. But it actually is a benefit too because you can see in the dark. You can actually see faces and expressions. Note, as you look through the viewfinder in low light, it's gonna be super grainy and even super blurry when you focus. When you take the photograph, however, you'll see your image is completely sharp and completely well exposed. But the viewfinder preview is gets in low light, gets completely ugh, ugly. Something you gotta get used to. All right, next, you're gonna have to get used to flashes. You're gonna have to make a flash switch. So as you know, the Canon uh, 600 EX2, these are great flashes, you know. I was using my Young Yo imitation 600s as my backlight and my room lights. And this guy's great because in low light, shooting single focus point, the um, IR on here, the you know infrared focus beam is great when the lights are really low your Canon can find focus. All right, so flashes for your Sony. I've chosen to go with the Godox Flashpoint system because they work with all the cameras. They work with my Canon, they can work with my Fuji, they work with my Sony. And what's great is the Flashpoint system, the flashes can talk to each other, and even better, the life of AAA batteries is over, which is the best thing. That's a <laughs> topic for a whole other video but they've been working fantastically in making the switch. Now, here's a little bonus pro. If you all already have the Godox, that was a weird noise. If you all, if you already have the Godox and Flashpoint system and you have a Canon Flashpoint Godox, I would say keep the Canon on top of your Sony because what happens is when you turn on that Canon version flash, it doesn't change the little preview that you have. If you put a Sony flash on there, image preview automatically goes away. It gives you a fake representation. It gives you like a fake 
uh, you know, it just turns the lights on. So I actually find that sometimes I use my Canon flashes on the Sony if I wanna keep the ambient, if the room is bright enough and I wanna keep the ambient in view. All right, cons, big cons that you'll miss. The biggest things you'll miss is the touch menu. Touching, pinching, the touch features, you know, as the Canon 5D on all Canon cameras is fantastic. A big negative also is if you are chimping, if you're shooting reception and you fire and you're checking down, uh, checking your image, if you try to focus or back button focus again, well, the back button focus is actually a zoom playback feature. And a lot of times it's a learning curve you find that if you're trying to shoot, look, and focus again, the camera's zooming in on a playback image and you can't shoot anymore. You actually have to pump the shutter to get out of playback. And this could be a little scary. So you have to make sure that you're, you pump the shutter. Well, it's kind of a weird muscle memory thing, but I know I pump the shutter after I check an exposure. I pump the shutter to get out of that playback menu right away. Another negative is there's no exposure needle if you're using the LCD. There is an exposure needle if you're using the EVF, which is neat. Uh, but again, if you're using it like a DSLR and holding the camera out, uh, it only has a plus and minus exposure rating. It doesn't have a, a little exposure needle, which would be nice. And the last big con is the buttons and dials. Uh, now they are getting bigger. The A7R4 was announced and the, the buttons are larger and the grip is larger but it's not gonna be anything like your Canon. These, uh, this thumb wheel is heaven on the Canon. I hope that was helpful for any pros thinking of making the switch. Let me know if you have any questions below. It's been fantastic, it's been great. Uh, getting a lot more photographs, a lot more grabs autofocus wise. And uh, let me know if you need any help. All right, I'll see you guys next time.